Dark chocolate is the new superfood. Maybe. Put the quinoa and avocado down. There's a new super duper food in town. Dark chocolate. Okay, maybe not, but it's still chocolate. According to three studies, dark chocolate may be giving your brain, immune system, and vision some small benefits. To study dark chocolate's effect on the brain, subjects were given 1.5 ounces then had their brain waves analyzed on an EEG machine. Participants had an increase in gamma waves 30 minutes after eating the chocolate. Gamma waves are associated with high levels of cognitive processing. In another study, scientists looked at the effect of dark chocolate on the immune system. Subjects were again given a dark chocolate bar for the first week and had the blood analyzed the following week. Participants had an increase in anti-inflammatory markers and infection-fighting T cells. The third study looked at a link between dark chocolate and vision. In two separate tests, 30 subjects were given two chocolate bars, both dark and milk chocolate, and conducted vision tests roughly two hours later. Scientists found that after eating dark chocolate, participants had small vision improvements. What can we take away from these results? Not much, really. The first two studies only had 10 people participating, and the third study only had 30. You could also drown your sorrows in some dark chocolate. Not getting enough Tomo can be bad for your health. Keeping livers alive boosts transplant success. It's alive! It's alive! A clinical trial published in the journal Nature has found preserving livers in warm storage similar to body temperature rather than cold storage improves transplant success. The trial involved 222 liver transplants at seven European medical centers. It looked at cold transplants versus warm livers connected to a perfusion machine. The participants were randomly picked to receive a warm liver or one preserved on ice. According to the BBC, the scientists found 50% less tissue damage in the warm livers. They also found that warm livers had a higher transplant success rate compared to cold ones. Only 16 out of the 137 warm livers had to be discarded, compared to 32 out of 133 cold ones. Researchers hope the study can help reduce the number of people that die waiting for transplants each year. Brit has world's worst case of super gonorrhea. What happens in Bangkok stays in Bangkok, unless it's a case of super clap. A man in the UK has been diagnosed with the world's worst ever case of super gonorrhea that is resistant to first choice antibiotics. The man picked it up after a sexual encounter with a woman in Southeast Asia. Health officials say it's the first time the infection was unable to be treated with a combination of azithromycin and ceftriaxone antibiotics. The infection is caused by the bacterium in Neisseria gonorrhea. It's spread through unprotected sex. Symptoms can include a thick green or yellow discharge from sexual organs, pain urinating, and bleeding between periods. If left untreated, it can cause infertility, pelvic inflammatory disease, and can be spread to children during pregnancy. Physicians now have the men on one last antibiotic, but will have to wait until next month to see if it works at combating the infection. This flu season in the U.S. could be a bad one. The flu has arrived early in North America as officials worry this season's outbreak could be severe. According to the CDC, the percentage of patients reporting flu-like symptoms reached the 2.2% threshold by late November, indicating flu season has begun. Experts believe the U.S. could be hit hard by the H3N2 strain this year, which the flu vaccine was found to be only 10% effective against. Flu vaccinations cause the body to develop antibodies in about two weeks. These antibodies then help fight against viruses in the vaccine. The seasonal flu vaccine is designed to protect against influenza strains researchers predict will be the most common during the upcoming season. Guess they didn't predict too well this year. Anyway, you should still get shots as the vaccine still protects against other flu strains. Dentists keep dying from IPF. CDC doesn't know why. Health officials are trying to figure out why dentists in Virginia have been dying of a rare form of lung disease. Officials have identified nine dentists, or dental workers, who are diagnosed with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, IPF, all of whom were treated at the same specialty clinic in Virginia. Of the nine cases, seven have died. Around 200,000 people in the U.S. have IPF at any one time. The CDC found that dental professionals were 23 times more likely to have IPF than the rest of the population. IPF causes scarring of the lungs and can be treated, but not cured. Over time, sufferers have difficulty getting oxygen to the body's vital organs, like the heart and brain. Signs of IPF include shortness of breath, a chronic and dry cough, 
weight loss, fatigue, joint muscle pains, and club fingers or toes. Doctors still don't know what causes IPF. Patients usually live three to five years after being diagnosed.